Hello, Roy Krakas here. Today I'm going to color my 8 by 12 inch photo that I took in 2013 inside the general store in Bodie, California, which is one of the best preserved ghost towns in the country. And the cool thing about the general store is that when the state of California bought the town of Bodie to turn it into a state historic park in the 60s, they found the, the general store bought it up shut opened it up and this is how they found it. So this is not staged, this is like the real merchandise from probably early 1940s, late 1930s, which is when the, the town was abandoned mostly. So the interesting thing is back in the day, um, people used to colorize their photographs with, with oils. Um, and that's what I'm going to do too. Actually, I do that a lot. Um, but the cool thing is that uh, at the heydays of, of Bodhi, late 1800s, 1870s, that was what people did in those days. People used to colorize their photographs. So I'm going to apply that to a photograph of Bodhi. And I would like to use cotton rounds and Q-tips. Back in the day, people used to apply the paint to the photos with cotton balls. I used to do that too. However, it gives off a lot of fluff. I didn't like it really. So then I looked into other ways to do it and cotton rounds and Q-tips, those are the way to do it. Like the equivalent of, doing a Q, of using a Q-tip is wrapping cotton on a toothpick and that's how people used to do it. So let's get started. <laughs> gloves because this paint is slightly toxic. I don't want to get it on my hands. So let's start with burnt sienna which is going to be in a lot of spots so I'd like to start with that. Putting it on my palette and then picking it up with a q-tip. Looking at this image there's so much detail going on so I will actually mostly resort to using Q-tips instead of the cotton rounds. Uh, but you can look at other videos of mine where I also make a lot of use of, of the cotton rounds, especially with very large surfaces or very big photos. So let's add some of the burnt sienna in a couple of spots. You can see it's a very translucent oil. You can see the structure of the photo underneath. I'm just rubbing it down gently. You may ask why not using brushes? Actually, I do use brushes when I uh, color on canvas. However, photo paper might scratch, the, the brushes might scratch the photo paper. And another reason is that, especially with, with the cotton rounds, it, it allows you to give it a very uniform, smooth look. So you don't, you don't see any brush strokes. Yeah, for, for example, let's, let's put this on a little wild here and now I can use a cotton round to very gently smooth this out. That's another reason why I like cotton rounds. I actually have another video of when I colored one of my images that I took inside a general store. That one I took longer ago and it's actually, I'm not sure it's more to the left of this one or more to the right. Um, it's called No Credit. That image sold out so I, I, I'm not working with that image anymore. But I still have like a time lapse of when I colored that one on my channel. So it's mostly the wooden boxes that I'm giving that burnt sienna color to. And I 
can apply it in like varying thicknesses. For example, now you can see I'm adding it a little more thicker and the color is more saturated than when I did the others here. I like this color a lot, this burnt sienna. I use it like here, also for wood, uh, beaches, the sand on the beach. See where else we can put it, maybe one of these bottles. on this big bottle here. You can see the image already looks totally different than when it was still pure black and white. Even with just this one color. Good. Now let's add some orange here and there. This is cadmium orange. Maybe put in some orange here. Let's add some contrasting colors. I'm gonna add some blue now. This is sky blue. absolutely don't remember what this scene looked like in reality in terms of colors so I'm, I'm just making it up of course for some brands I kind of know what it what it what it looks like 
I kind of go with the brand colors in that case. But these bottles, for example, I, I just go along, make it up. Let's do some yellows. So this is cadmium yellow. This is another thing I would like to show you. The, 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 even though they're transparent, the, the, the yellow is a little more opaque. As you can see here, I put it on a black background, yet it covers it. So I always like to, when I go over darker areas with yellow, I remove it again, so like I just did. And even like here where there's a lot of structure underneath, remove a little more so it, it gets more transparent. Like that. Just adding some different colors into areas I did before also looks good. See, it's not just one uniform color, but Adding that yellow touch in there makes it look better. It's starting to look pretty interesting already. Let's call all these letters very roughly, it went over the lines, but that's not a big deal. So now let's add a little bit of red here and there. Let's take, let's see, Carmine Extra Strong, which is a very bright red. Let's add that 
here. You can see the background here of this box is kind of middle gray, so it really desaturates that red. If I want a very bright red, I should have made those regions very light before I printed, so the, the red doesn't get desaturated by the gray that's underneath. And sometimes I do that, or well, sometimes, I mean, I pay a lot of attention to that actually. Especially if you want bright blue skies, you really want to make those skies really bright, really white, or light gray before you print them. And now I think the last color I'm going to use is oxide green. Start with some bottles down here. We want to tone down some of the yellows, like here. It's a little too bright. So with a clean side of a Q-tip, I can remove it. So went over the lines, some of that green, and it's finished. There we go. A lot of detail in this image. Turned out pretty good, I think. So if you like the video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of my work, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I also have uh, some other body photos that I do. I also do pastels on matte paper and oils and acrylics on canvas. So I will see you next time. Yeah.